Uh, currently, we are based in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, and in the US and uh, New York. I'm also the lead for the Women Tech Makers in the Netherlands and a very frequent fly, um, traveler that goes around to globe for giving talks and also a part of the GDG communities for, I think, five years now. So tying up your users to your app is one of the most important and yet one of the most puzzling parts in app development. So the studies have shown that the users acquire a very, very strong impression about your app within the very first uh, 30 seconds that they will actually use it. And of course, this is uh, about loading indicators or about splash screens that are pretty much impossible to avoid in most of the apps. So this is probably all the time that you have to actually convince your users not only not to close your app, of course, but also to come back to your app and even prefer it for an app that they are already using. And I'm not going to say that it's easy to impress someone within 30 seconds, but at least give it a try. So once upon a time, I was sitting quietly at my office, and then my director came to me, and he showed me one of the, the starting uh, screens for an app that we were using at that point. And he was like, you see this? I want this to be sexy. And of course, a couple of jokes later, I have to learn this, OK. Yeah, a couple of jokes later, um, animations were decided. And we, I had zero idea about animations at that point. So I started looking for examples in apps that would make an OK app go to awesome. And I found actually very good examples. And I would like to show you like two of them that made me realize the importance of um, the animations in mobile development. So the first is called the Google Playbook. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Uh, if you're not, it's a really, really nice app. And you can find great piece of article and devices there. And I was impressed on how an empty screen cannot look boring, but instead it's interesting, it's joyful, and it's prompting at the same time. And I would bet like, if everyone in this, that in this room uh, would design that screen, like. 70% of the designs could be like this. This is not impressing anyone. I mean, like, this is 70% of us, and this is not impressing anyone. And I'm pretty sure that everyone can do better than this. If you can do worse than this, then, yeah, Houston, you have a problem. Uh, you should probably do something about this. So this is not interesting. This is not impressing anyone. This is dual. Like, no one will actually go back to the screen. And the second one that I was telling you about is called Fabulous. And take a moment to think what is the first thing that a user will see when it opens that. It's a splash screen. And you may think like, oh, yeah, maybe it's too much work for this, and maybe it's too much work for nothing. And it might seem like this at start, but take a moment to rethink this. First of all, uh, it takes the user about 15 seconds to actually go to the, to the app, to, do, to get out of the splash screen. But of course, the user does not realize this, because he doesn't see a loading indicator. He doesn't see a static logo. He actually sees something very, very impressive. So even if he or she had zero interest, when actually they open the app, you grab your attention, their attention. They're not leaving from that. Like th they want to see what is next. And also, you made a splash screen working not only for you and for your, uh, for your app to load all of your data, but also for your users that are just, you, you have their attention now, and they're going to stay at this app. And there is one thing that I want you to pay attention to, like how the icons are just swiping. And wait for it. So first is the background of the icon that is sliding over there. And then the colored part is following that motion. 
And this is the word that I want you to keep from all this talk, motion. This is what you need to add to your Android dictionary if it's not already there. And there are multiple ways that you can add motion into an app and using only the different uh, Android APIs. So animations need to be smooth. They are there to provide your users with feedback about their actions. And also, there are four questions that need to be um, answered just by watching an animation. And these questions are, where did the current view come from? Where did the previous one go? What did I click? That's the most important one. And where can I go next? And there are great examples in apps that we are using every day. And one of my favorite ones is the YouTube. Like it, it, every single animation will just answer those four questions. They provide feedback for the action that I did. I know what I clicked when that animation popped up. And also the search for the playbook. That was really impressing as well. But you need to be very, very careful when it comes to animations. Any animated object will just constantly grab the attention of the user at that particular point of the screen. So you need to be careful that, A, you are not distracting your user. So if I click something on top, I don't want something to pop out at the bottom or having something animated at the bottom. And B, uh, you're not blocking him for performing an action while you're playing your animation. So when you want to send an email, for example, you don't send the email after you finish the animation. You first send your uh, email, and then you may play this animation. You don't want your users to wait for your animation so that they can perform an action. Imagine having an app that is playing music, and the user is playing the stop button. You cannot wait for the animation to finish to actually stop the music. You have to do it immediately. So animations are not really difficult to start for. But what I found really hard was to decide what, kind, what API should I use for, which, uh, for the animation that I wanted to implement. And I was like, yeah, OK, I guess I choose you. And I ended up with a lot of, oh, that that, looks seem to be, that seems to be working. And then you add just one teeny tiny piece of code more, and then it's boom. And it will either break. It can be the performance that it gets bad. Like Something terrible will happen if you use the wrong API. And the documentation that I found for when to use something is just zero. It's not there. It's like, oh, this is for rotating objects, and this is for translating objects. And I was like, OK, I can use that. And I can use that. And you're like, oh, there is another animation uh, class that, it's, that has exactly the same description and the documentation. And you're like, OK, so when do I use this, and when do I use that? And I found out with a very, very bad way. So I'm here to actually tell you my mistakes in hopes that you can just learn from them as I did. So starting from the oldest one, you have the animation class. And it's the only one that was available prior to Honeycomb 3.0. And the animation class has five known subclasses, which is the alpha animation for fading in and out an object, uh, a view, uh, rotate animation, which, guess what? It will rotate your uh, view. The scale animation for, bigger, for making it bigger or smaller. Uh, the translate animation for moving it around the screen, and the animation set, which is a combination of um, animations that you want for different properties of that same view, though. So when to use this? So when you want to animate only one property of a view, and that is a view, it's not um, um, it's, it's only a view, it only applies for views, then this is pretty safe. Like, if you want to just rotate your object, for example, that's the, your view, that's pretty safe. But when not to use? Well, when you want to animate more than one properties, mm, this might not be the right thing. And also, when you want to animate a clickable view, and it might seem funny, but look at this. So I have a button over there, and I do my, my translation, and I move it down. And then I click on that button again, and nothing happens. And I click on the position that the button used to be, and 
it plays again. So it's not a bug. Definitely not. But if you want to have uh, to translate clickable views, just do not use the animation class. So introduced on Honeycomb 3.0, the Properties Animation API was the real, the first real animation API to see in Android. It makes it quite easy to animate um, any property of any object or view. It's not only for views. And it just takes a starting value and end value, and it applies the transition that you are going to say. And it also has um, some subclasses. Uh, the animator said the value animator, the object animator, and the time animator. So the animator set is m closely to what we said before. So you can just animate, it, it, have different animations play either together or in sequence or after a specific delay. The cool thing with the animator set is that now you can have, uh, you can play animations together. You can make them be in sequence or in whatever order you want, not only for that object, but for multiple objects. So I can animate a button, I can animate a text view, and I can say that after this animation finishes, the, my button animation finishes, then you will um, animate my, my text view, for example, which was not possible before that. And when animating properties, though, there are two uh, steps. So the first one is to calculate the values, and the second one is to set them to an object, to a, to a target object. So the first part, calculating the values, is taken care of by the value animator. And when you want, of course, you, you just uh, calculate the values, but you have to set them to somewhere to see it. So then you have the object animator for that. And if you need simple animations, um, like rotations or changing some values, either it's color or um, dimensions or anything, this works like a charm. And the, um, the advantage is that you can have multiple properties that you want to animate. Um, it's very easy to, to combine animations and to say that I want it to be played after a specific delay or I want it to be there. There are also a lot of listeners for that. So it's, if you want something simple, that works like a charm. And I think that I've used the animator class for more than 80% of all the animations that I've ever used. I only found, so when not to use, I only found one uh, specific um, use case that this did not work. And it was just a rotation. I was just fr frustrated about this. But I will come to you later on for this one. And also, you have the view property animator class, which is uh, also from the property animation API. And it's a simple way to animate several properties in parallel. It has a very, very simple syntax. It can be this if you just want the rotation, or it can be something like this if you have multiple properties that you want to animate. It's very simple. But it's only uh, for animating in parallel, and it's only for animating uh, properties of the same uh, view in the same target object. And then you have the transition API, which is, which is a playground, really. I think that I do not know everything about this. It, the things that you can do is pure magic. You just need to have a lot of time on that. You, you need to put some time on that. But um, the general approach is that you just create some scenes. We will see about this. You just tell your system that this is my starting UI, this is my um, my end UI, and I want you to have the translate uh, transition, for example. And it will do everything for you. So when to use, um, when you want to animate something in the, same, um, in the same view group, in the same layout, when you want to animate the transition between, anima um, between activities, uh, when you want to animate the transition between activities and fragments, and the coolest thing about this, and I really love this, is that you're going to have share elements. You can say that, and you must have seen that in a lot of um, 
in apps that use like galleries, for example, that you click on something and then it opens a different activity. But the, um, the common element is just, it seems that it's the same element, but it's really not, of course. But it's really easy to do. And yay, documentation. So the main features, according to the documentation, is the group level animations, the transition based animation. Uh, they ha it has a lot of built-in animations, resource file support, and lifecycle callbacks. Um, so what does this mean in action, of course? So first you create uh, a scene, and a scene is just a storing place for the state of the view hierarchy and the properties at that point of, the, um, of, your, of your app state. So it's just storing what it says. And most of the times, the starting scene is created automatically for you from this, the, the current state of the app. And then you just create another um, layout, or it can be from the, from the Java code, of course. And you create your custom animation, or you use the animations, uh, the, the transitions that the, the framework already is providing you. And then you inform the transition manager that this is my scene, this is my ending scene, this is the animation that I want. Just do your magic. And as you can see, that there are a lot of indirect subclasses, and there is pretty much something there for any transition that you might use, like the exploding, the fading, and the sliding. There are a lot of already transitions there for you. And the result is this. It's, I was so, so fascinated to see about the transitions and how easy it's to, to actually do something like this. So you just have your sense. You say that I want to, to slide, or I want to fade in, or I want to fade out. And then everything happens for you. And this is so, so little code if you just see all the things that are happening in your screen. So this took me like a minute and a half to do it. And you can see, of course, that it's not perfect, because I didn't want to put any more um, time on that. I just wanted to, 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 um, to show you that this was built in a minute and a half. Just imagine what you can do if you have five more minutes for that. The only bad thing is that the minimum SDK for that is 21. And I'm pretty sure that I could do that with the 19 as the minimum SDK as well. Um, but yeah, it's, the minimum is definitely 19 for the most transitions. So that's, that's a bit on the edge, at least for our apps uh, at that point. And then you have the physics-based animations API, which was introduced by Google um, this I.O. And the features, according, does anyone know about the physics-based API, by the way? Have you heard about it? Yeah, no, maybe. Yeah, OK. I see a lot of heads nodding, so I guess, yes. Um, so the features is like natural looking, course correction, uh, reduced vi vi visual junks. And am I missing nothing? OK. Um, but uh, of course, an image worth uh, a thousand words. So this is how the animations would look like without using the physics-based animation. And this is how it actually looks. It's very, very smooth. And there are two animations that you can have. is the fling animation and the spring animation. So the fling animation, for example, you can have it as here in the recycler view. And what is the important thing that it was introduced, excuse me, um, with the, with the physics-based animation is that you can actually set the velocity. You can take the velocity from your user's action and use that as a feedback uh, for, for the velocity of that animation. And some great examples, for example, would be the drawer navigations that will open and close, um, or here the recycler view that you can just set the velocity according to what your user is doing. 
and of course uh, some the the bottom seat navigation. So it's yeah, um, you can just set the how fast or how slow it will just open. It's not that you're just popping views because your your user made um, an action. You can actually see and give feedback also for the speed that they were they used. And there are also some third parties alternative uh, that I found quite interesting. So the first one is the Additive Animations API by David Gunster. And the other one is the Rebound by Facebook. And they, they are pretty much doing the same thing. Um, I haven't used the first one yet, but it said that it's closer to the View Properties Animation API. So if you already have some animations there, you don't really have to change a lot of code just to do have this, this physics-based animation. And then we have the drawables, and there are a lot of them. And of course, not all of them are just for animating. Um, but I wanted to make a small reference for some that made me hit some dead ends. The first one was the uh, animation drawable aka the frame-by-frame -frame animation. So what you're doing is actually having a list. And you can say, you can have all your different drawables there. And it will be played in sequence pretty much as a GIF. And it's, it's really, really nice for reusing resources. But you have to avoid it if you have larger frames. If you have something that's full screen, this is a no-go. Because this is what you're going to take. <laughs> um, it also might get some, if, if it doesn't get an out of member exception, it will get, um, it might get slower. Like the, the performance is not good. If you have full screen animations and the, the frame by frame um, is, is not the right way to go. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, yeah. Last but not least, it's the layer drawable. And is anyone familiar with the layer drawable here? Can you raise your hands? OK, yeah. Uh, so the layer drawable, what it does is that you can actually have multiple items in there, multiple drawables. And they will be stacked on top of each other. And it's, it's really cool. And I thought that I had the perfect example. So I had an image button, and it had a background. And of course, you cannot animate backgrounds. So I was like, oh, OK, yeah, perfect. I just use the layer layout, uh, the, the layer drawable, and I'm safe. Like, I will just animate only one of those items. And the layer drawable laughed. And the easy way would be to just have an image view. And on top of the image view, you have my image, uh, my image button. And of course, this is not the right approach because it will be that that part of the screen will be drawn twice. It will be drawn for the image view, and it will be drawn for the image button as well. And performance matters. And this was also in a recycler view, so that that would be just multiple um, a multiple views. So I was stuck with this for hours. I've tried every single animation that I knew, or every single animation that I actually was able to find online. And this worked. Like, my layout had to be like this, my, uh, my sorry, my drawable. And then I can animate it like this. And the, the, the frustrating part about this is that if you have a layered, layer drawable and you want to animate only one of those items, then you cannot just say, oh, rotate or translate or whatever. You have to have your translation like here, your, your animation at your XML, and then you just set that property name level. And this worked. And I was like, why does this work? Like, what is that level doing there? 
And I was charging for hours just to see what this level is there. The documentation that I found, zero. So after searching for, I don't know how many hours I've spent on that, really. And after searching and searching and searching, I found like on page four at Google, um, an, an article from a blog from 2000 something that it actually said like, yeah, because layer durables are just stacked on each other. So you have to bring it on top. So you have to set the level over there. And I'm like, yeah, OK. And how do you actually say like, OK, I have a rotation. But how do I say like how many degrees it will go? How do I say like the velocity and all this? I couldn't find how to say like how many degrees it will go. But the velocity is actually that last number. So from the values. and the 10,000 worked for me. Like I tried with one, two, three, four. I tried with 100, and then I found this, and it worked. And I was so impressed that it worked. Yeah, so this actually took me like a whole working day, maybe even more, for just finding out what the level property name is. And the animated vector doubles, it's not that I hit it a uh, dead end with that, uh, but it definitely needs your attention. Um, it's that cool icons that can transform uh, from a microphone to a stop or from a play to the pose. And they just morph from one to another. And according to the documentation, so yeah, I will just tell you first when you can use it and when not. So when to use it is when you want to connect to actions. Like if I have that microphone, for example, and I want to record, and then I have the stop button, then it's nice just seeing that it will morph to a different icon. But my actions are connected. So if your actions are not connected and you're just morphing things, that's not cool. Another cool example is that the hamburger menu that actually is going to, um, to a back arrow. Um, so yeah, when not to use, when your, your actions are completely different. And now it's the documentation time. And it says, like, note that the paths must be um, compatible for morphing. Specifically, the, the paths must have the same commands in the same order and must have the same number of parameters for each command. <laughs> what? <laughs> so after searching a bit, you find out that this is like the whole text is this one. So the value from them, the value to, must have the same amount of commands over there. And if you ever tried something with this, you know that this is painful. Like you open an XML, this is very, very nice one, but you open an XML of the durable, and there are like hundreds of lines for some of the durables, and you're like, ah, OK, where are all my commands? Like, how do I make these parameters just fit for each other? And as you can imagine, this can be a royal pain. So what you do is you have the save cipher. And it's just, it's, it's very nice. It will tell you, like, you will have your two, um, your two icons there. You will say that I want to morph from this to these. And if the parameters do not match, then it will just tell you. And there is a visual icon that you can say that, OK, just add a point here and add a line there. A, a visual, visually, it won't have any difference, but for for the value to and the value from, then it will make them to be nice. And you also have this, so it's easy to actually say, like, OK, so make it a bit slower there, make it a bit faster there. It's really, really nice. You should really have a look at that. And although Android is supplying more than enough for the basic animations, if you have something very complex, there is absolutely no way that you can do it easily with the Android SDKs. So there you have the Lottie by the Airbnb to save you. Does it work? Yeah, it does. Does it work like magic? No. I'm not good in After Effects, so I didn't do anything. But they have a lot of examples that you can just download. And I, I downloaded three of them and tried them. 
and everything seemed to be uh, to have a small problem. Like this one, for example, it should be completely different. It should have some legs there that were walking. I never saw that legs. They also has that white square over there. It might be the, XM the, um, the, the file that it has a problem. I might have done something wrong because I didn't put too much effort on that yet. Uh, but the only thing that I do know for sure is that if you have something like this, if you have really complex animations, uh, then it, it definitely worth your time. Instead of putting all this effort in trying to, to do it uh, with just the Android as the case, this is pretty perfect. And there is really so much to talk about the animations. And this talk was only scratching the surface. But I really, really hoped that you've, you learned from my mistakes. And I made a lot of them, as you could see. And that you will actually put some more effort in grabbing your user's attention. I saw from some apps that didn't have animations before, and they were added afterwards, that they grew, and they grew fast. So thank you, everyone. And I will take any questions that you are having. Over here. Hello, uh, that was a great speak, and uh, lots of uh, ideas uh, have been. Uh, this is this like on? Or okay. So basically, uh, my question is regarding one situation that you have uh, talked about, and uh, this is about this animation drawable for uh, big big frame animations. I wonder how did you get away from this one because we are currently stumbling upon this this limitation, and we have used the um, GIF wrapping class, which basically uses uh, something like input stream rather than um, loading the entire drawable from from uh, from from the to the uh, into the memory. So, is there anything you are you are currently using for this problem or? Uh, for for having something like the, the yeah we have animation uh, animation drawable which is really big and it causes uh, uh, out of memory exception actually yeah um, well what I would use is the animator sets I would at least try this so have the frames there but actually setting them with the animator set and you can also have it by the Java code so you don't really have to to have um, XMLs there uh, mm -hmm. so I would definitely try this and so no yeah, silver bullet for this one sorry <laughs> no, no no silver no silver bullet for this one not really. No. Okay, so the second question is that actually I have installed this fabulous application. It looks really cool. It's really encouraging to subscribe because this is a paid uh, application for some services. It really encourages for, for actually doing this. Do you have any other apps that you uh, recommend for looking for the good, uh, good practices for the UI? Well, this is very so fabulous. What fabulous is doing is it's it's not using any fancy animations or something like this. If you actually look only at the animations, it's it's pretty nice and it's pretty easy it's stuff to do. It's, yes, it is. So I also like the the playbook for the same reason. I think it's very prompting. It will tell you like where to look. It is also very psychological. It's yeah, uh, do something. This is really so so satisfying for for, uh, for any step that I have already tried to uh, uh, browse to any subscriptions. I probably won't buy anything, but I can really imagine a user, uh, many users that would would do. It. Yeah. Um, no, I, d I don't really have other examples like at least for paid applications for prompting the users that much. Um, these two were the best that I could actually find. And especially for Fabulous, because when I opened it, the first time that I opened it, I had zero interest on in that. 
And the, the, the very first thing, first of all, it's, it has so many colors and everything, so it grabs your attention with this. Yeah, the palette is a bit of discussion, but the flow and the animation yeah, the, the, great. Yeah. Um, I think that it uses a lot of the guidelines that the Google has uh, for animations and for transitioning between the two, um, yeah, between activities or between fragments. So if you look at the material design, for example, it, it has a lot of elements from that guidelines. Yeah, okay, so this is, thank, thanks a lot for, for the No, you're welcome. Hey, um, what are good strategies to implement uh, animations if you have to support old API versions? All the API, hmm. Uh, Add a bunch of if else well, statements. <laughs> yeah, the animator, uh, the animator class uh, supports. I think that it starts from fourteen or something, maybe even, um, yeah, even lower. Okay. So it's pretty safe to use in every animation, every single animation that you have, like a very simple animations though. Okay. Um, about the transitions, I do not have an easy solution for you. Is you can have the same and say that it's only for 19 and below, uh, but it will be pretty painful because you will have to do everything on yourself. So uh, you use the animator class, but you are actually, um, yeah, you're actually implementing everything on your own. So. Okay, and then if I want to add more of the more recent APIs. There's no other way than just adding a bunch of if else and like clutter my code base a bit for that purpose. So for the physics-based APIs, this is why I had also the alternatives listed there. Uh, so I think that they go lower. They definitely go lower, and I'm pretty sure that it will also be in the support library for for. I think that it's already there. Actually, I think that it's already the support library for the physics-based animations. Okay, thank you. Um, hi. Um, I wanted to ask, I, I noticed that, uh, at least from the slides, uh, you mostly construct your animations uh, imperatively, so from, from Java. Is there a reason for that? Uh, or does that have advantages over declaring them in, in XML? No, 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 it's exactly the same. Like having it from the XML and having it from the Java code is exactly the same. Um, it's It's a personal preference that I have everything in my Java mm -hmm. code. But it's it's exactly yeah. the same. One, one thing I also, uh, I haven't used the layer lists uh, before, mm -hmm. but uh, you, were, you, you didn't figure out how to put, uh, for, for, uh, for example, for the rotate uh, item, uh, more properties like uh, how much degrees and things. And did, I think it exists in the XML at least. Have you tried that? As an well, attribute. Uh, for the layer uh, drawable, I did it with the XML. So you, ah. I did have the XML as well, that I had all of my items, and then I had the rotate of my XML uh, because I couldn't go. I I couldn't do it with code, so I did have it with my XML. So you could specify if, the degrees in the XML. Mm, no, you you it's. It's really, really difficult. I did. I found it very difficult to actually animate only one item from that list. Yeah. So I put. I think that I worked more than a, a day, a full working day, just to find out something that it works. Uh, if I would do that again, um, I do not know. Honestly, I think that I did it because it was either this or me. So I had to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if if it was uh, all this effort. So mine was in this it was in the in a recycler view. So it had to be like this. But if it was just one image button somewhere, I wouldn't go through all this. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>